So help us understand a little how rights developed in Great Britain. Obviously, being regarded as a subject hardly sounds compatible with respect for individual rights. Well, Americans very much think of their rights as God-given or given by nature and as inalienable and not changing. They also believe that governing power originates with the people, which is the concept of popular sovereignty. Ultimate governing authority comes from the people. That's not how British subjects understand their rights. Now remember that American colonists for a long time were regarded as British subjects, and most of the charters gave to the charter holders and to the colonists all the rights of British subjects. So the notion of individual rights is not foreign to um, British thinking. But British subjects exist in a very different relationship to their government than Americans do to their government. Initially, they were subjects of the crown. Since the glorious revolution of 1688, England, Great Britain has recognized a system called parliamentary sovereignty. Parliament has the final say, final authoritative say over what the laws of uh, England are. And that evolution, both of representative government and the notion of rights, is something that we, again, we're struggling with today. Are the rights, for example, that are identified in state bills of rights and in the bills of the rights to the United States Constitution the only rights there are? Do rights evolve? Do they change? Or are they fixed and immutable? And we have all kinds of wonderful examples of debates on precisely that point in our political discourse today.